Good morning, and welcome to an all-new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Zach Alumgum. And I'm Joseph Bianchini. With more and more schools beginning to open their doors part-time to students, Roseville High School continues to move close behind. Many in the RHS community have mixed feelings about the move to a hybrid model in early October. We go to Joshua Jones Trammell with more. Roseville High School will be reopening into a hybrid model on October the 12th. Many students have mixed emotions on the district's approach to reopening during this uncertain time. Sophomore Matthew Quady is concerned. You know, I still think it's uh, kind of early. Uh, you know, we don't really have the vaccine yet. Uh, but, you know, I mean, as long as, I guess if we're following guidelines on masks and social distancing, I guess it would be okay. But, you know, it's so unpredictable um, with the virus. Like some st states, um, they reopen and they have to shut down again. Other students, like sophomore athlete Brennan Bass, are optimistic about getting back to class and back on the field. It can be beneficial as a student and as an athlete, because a lot of students, they learn better with personal interaction with their teachers and in a group environment, so I think that's pretty beneficial for them. As an athlete, I mean, every athlete wants their sport to continue. If school reopens, it's more likely we're going to have seasons, so that's a positive. But then again, we're in a global pandemic, so... If one thing goes wrong, it's all going to get shut back down. So I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's got its positives and its negatives, but I think it's best to be optimistic about it and hope for the best. Junior Allie Phillips, who likes the idea of moving back into the classroom, however, is unsure of how much it will benefit students. I'm excited because I learn better in a classroom and rather than online. Like it makes more sense to me, like just seeing the teacher write on the whiteboard and being able to ask questions in person, which you don't really get to do as much online. But I feel like I don't really understand the point because I've heard from multiple teachers that it's just going to be us on Zoom in classroom. And if that's how it's going to be, I don't really see the point in going back, especially if the majority of the students are going to stay online anyways. Because of the uncertainty of students' home life, Principal Richter worries that it will not be equitable for some students that aren't able to come to school. There are some students who have a different struggle at home than other students. I think the equity piece will be everybody can still access the same set of courses. We're using the Zoom platform. So if I've got students who, um, for example, are helping out with family, watching little brothers and sisters, which we've run into already, um, that's going to be a challenge. They really don't have the ability to say, I'd like to be on ground. English teacher Amy Maurer is concerned that what she sees as a lack of communication and information from the district about the precautions she will have to put in place in order to keep her classroom up to health regulations. It's possible, and my concern is that there are a lot of details, logistical concerns that have not been shared, and um, if they have been planned for, that plan has not been communicated to teachers. So, for example, am I responsible for setting up desks in my room? How far apart should they be? What do I do with the extra desks that then won't fit in my room? Um, are um, students supposed to enter buildings one way and exit another way? What sort of um, cleaning obligations do I have in terms of making sure that my classroom is safe? What protocol should I follow if I have um, a student who arrives um, without a mask um, or is um, belligerent about not wearing a mask, is that uh, something that we're going to enforce or is that not a concern? Um, so a lot of um, things that I'm going to be responsible for haven't been articulated to me. There will be a survey asking families if they want to participate in a hybrid model or stay online for the time being. With the enforcement of social distancing, safety precautions, and the reopening of school, school buses are figuring out a new way of transporting students to school. According to Rich Avery, the transportation department technician, while waiting at the bus stop, students shall practice social distancing of at least six feet of each other. All students must wear a face mask during the entire time of waiting at the bus stop and the duration of the bus route, which includes loading and unloading procedures. Students will be required to sit in the last available seat from the back to the front. There will be very limited seating with one student per bench and using every other bench. Students will not save their seats. At designated school bus stops, students must disembark from the front to back to eliminate any unnecessary passing of other students. Avery says that added restrictions to existing school bus rider rules and regulations are for the safety of students and drivers. Any violation may result in rev revocation of your bus riding privileges. We now go over to Isabella Foley with entertainment. 
Thanks, Kobe. As we all know, streaming is as popular as ever right now, with new TV shows and movies coming to streaming services monthly. Here are some new things that we can expect this fall. First, we have the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die. His name is Seven. And what does he want? Revenge. Me. When her secret finds its way out, it'll be the death of you. Recruited to rescue a kidnapped scientist, globetrotting spy James Bond is hot on the trail of a mysterious new villain with dangerous technology. No Time to Die is the 26th installment in a long-running series of James Bond movies with various actors. I think that this movie looks super promising and is going to be full of action and have a thrilling plot. You can expect to see this movie in theaters November 20th. The songs of Eon's past tell of battles between Mandalore the Great and an order of sorcerers called Jedi. You expect me to search the galaxy and deliver this creature to a race of enemy sorcerers? This is the way. And now we have the second season of the Disney Plus exclusive, The Mandalorian. Since its series premiere last November, The Mandalorian is back with another season, and from what we can see, it's clear that he'll be continuing his journey to find which species the child comes from. Taking from what we saw from the trailer, it's possible that he may even come in contact with some Jedi warriors along the way. As a huge Star Wars fan and watcher of the show myself, I'm extremely excited to see where this season takes us. You can expect to see the show on Disney Plus on October 30th. In other entertainment news, on Wednesday, September 16th, Apple finally released the long-awaited iOS 14 update. Users have been waiting for this since June when they showcased it at their big event, amongst other things that we can look forward to in the fall. iOS 14 includes a lot of positive changes to iPhones. This includes things such as widgets for things like weather, clock, calendar, and more. It also has an app library where now you can access all your apps all in one place. And most importantly, it includes a new feature where instead of phone calls taking up the whole screen, they just pop up like a banner as if other notifications would. And now we go back to news. Thanks, Isabella. COVID-19 has affected many events and fun activities. However, one senior has found a way to work around that. We go to Taste and Hunt with the story. Attempting to maintain connections during quarantine, Senior Davis Fam created a game called Senior Assassin. To get all the seniors together and have a big group game to make new friends, <laughs> to become closer with some of the seniors that we don't talk to. So how Senior Assassin works is basically we got a whole bunch of seniors and every senior has someone they're trying to hunt or kill, which is basically shooting someone with a water gun. And, uh, while you're trying to hunt someone, someone's always trying to hunt you, and it goes into a huge loop, and it all ties in together. So basically, if I hunt the person that I was set out to kill, then I will get the person that they're hunting, and it goes around in a huge circle while someone's always trying to hunt me. Senior Brandon Eastman ensures social distancing rules are still being followed. You use social distancing when playing Senior Assassin because like, you're, we're using water guns, and obviously they uh, like shoot out, so it's not like you're right next to someone shooting them. You have to be from a distance anyways. So that's how social distancing is uh, in play while we're doing Senior Assassin. Safety items are implied into Senior Assassin to make the game more enjoyable. We'll have a safety item. So basically there'll be like a text to all the group chats saying like, so-and-so item is a safety item which basically means if you have that item on like in the past we did uh like swim goggles so if you wore the swim goggles you'd be safe and you wouldn't be able to get assassinated so that's also a good tactic to stay safe and usually those items last like a couple days at a time senior assassin is played with the use of water guns or even a spray bottle cool to see some good news and seniors finding safe ways to still get together for their last year in high school that's it for us today on eye of the tiger and remember, we're always on at iTheTigerNews.com. See you next time.